Amigos, ¿cómo están? Espero que estén disfrutando de su viaje por las calles y carreteras aquí en Estados Unidos. Esta es una edición más de Auto 060. Vamos a tener un show muy interesante. Vamos a empezar con el reporte de salud de los autos en Estados Unidos. Y se van a preguntar si este es un show de medicina o qué está pasando aquí. Un poco de confusión, pero no. Efectivamente, es un reporte anual de la compañía Car MD que eh, analiza lo que pasa con los autos, eh, sobre todo cuando ustedes y yo y quizá todo el mundo que nos está escuchando no le pone atención a esa lucecita que es el check engine. También vamos a hablar con un experto de Edmunds.com que nos va a explicar eh, los detalles de un proyecto muy interesante que se llama el, uh, car free, el debt free car, o sea un auto sin deuda, es decir, comprar un auto usado, mantenerlo y ellos tuvieron un auto por un año completo para analizar exactamente el costo de la compra inicial y luego el mantenimiento, hicieron incluso un viaje muy largo a través de todo el país, muy, muy datos muy interesantes y consejos de qué hacer a la hora de comprar, tener, mantener y luego vender un auto usado. Vamos a estar también aquí en Miami Beach en la conferencia Hispanic Size 2013 con representantes de la Toyota, las eh, iniciativas que apoya la compañía Toyota y también con General Motors. Y al final, una sorpresa, estén muy atentos porque vamos a regalarles un equipo para que puedan escuchar eh, Cristina Radio Network y toda la programación en Sirius XM Radio. And uh, now we're going to switch back to English because uh, we have our first guest. Uh, we have Christine Brockoff from CarMD. How are you, Christine? Hello? Yes. Hi, Kristen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, so, as I was saying in the introduction of the show, we are going to talk about health, but uh, not to be confused with our health, but the health of our cars, right? So, the 2013 Car MD Vehicle Health Index. Can you explain a little bit what is this? Yes, Car MD has a database of uh, millions of repairs from when your check engine light comes on. And we work with uh, mechanics and technicians all across the country who report to our database. So we're studying the most common reasons that the check engine light came on last year and trying to help people understand why it's important to pay attention to that light um, because the costs are going up. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned that, what, 10% in the last year? That's a pretty... Pretty important hack in the price. Yeah, we saw six years where the prices were coming down. A lot of times because wow. the repair shops had to uh, lower their um, their rates to be competitive. And um, now we're seeing a trend upward and rates went up. Uh, well, it's a, it's a 10% jump nationwide. The average cost when the check engine light comes on is about $367 now. Wow, so you mentioned six years that the price were uh, not increasing or decreasing. That has to do with the recession so in a way I guess it's uh, good news in the sense that the economy is recovering but it's bad news if you don't pay attention to that check engine light because uh, the price have gone up 10% 367 And uh, it's not just because the prices went up. A lot of times we're seeing more difficult repairs as vehicles age. The average age of a vehicle is now 11, more than 11 years old. We, we consulted with R.L. Polk, which is an expert on this. Mm -hmm. And uh, CarMD is seeing that, that uh, cars are really outlasting their parts. Uh, the, They're being designed so well these days that now we're starting to see like transmissions and catalytic converters and more expensive things that you know are only designed to last 10 or 11 years. Um, people are keeping their cars past these parts, so you are going to have to budget to have some of those more expensive repairs, and they take a little bit longer to repair, which is why also some of the labor has gone up. I understand. Okay, so the study was conducted uh, reviewing the data you said about. 161,000 repair services around the country. The, uh, on their um, garages that are uh, authorized by AAC, right? Can you explain what's that? Because people, it's very important, I think, that, that people realize that they have to pay attention where they take their cars. Yes, um, CarMD always recommends that you look for a shop that has what we call the blue seal. It's automotive service excellence, and when we look for repair shops to, and dealerships to report to us, and when we hire people to analyze our data and support our products, we always want to make sure that they're ASE certified and ASE trained. It means that you're getting someone that knows 
how to work on your car. And uh, those are the mechanics and technicians who are reporting into our database. We, we don't necessarily partner with the ASC organization, but we always look for shops that have certified technicians on staff. And uh, um, some people might say that uh, taking the car to a dealership or to a certified mechanic uh, might be more expensive, but at the end, it, I think it's... It, it becomes more expensive if you just like try to take a, try to take a shortcut and, and pay less for something that should be done in the proper way. You know, there's a lot of repairs that are very low cost. In fact, the second most common reason that the check engine light comes on is because of a loose gas cap because you yeah. didn't put it on right. Or, I thought that was the first one. It's the second most uh -huh. common. Um, an oxygen sensor is the first, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a sec. But it's great to see that with the with the loose fuel cap that people are starting to realize that that is a common reason. So if you're on your way to a meeting or you just don't have time to address the check engine light right away, as long as there's no major symptoms and it's not flashing, sometimes it's okay to go ahead and fill up the tank, tighten the gas cap, and see if it goes away. If it doesn't, you absolutely need to have it looked at because the number one reason that your check engine light comes on is a faulty oxygen sensor and it's going to seem like your car is driving just fine but that oxygen sensor is basically going haywire and telling your car to use up more fuel than it needs and it's sucking down gas and hurting your fuel economy and at the end of the day if you ignore that problem you're going to have to have the part repaired but you're also costing yourself extra and going to the pump more frequently yeah so this is like a domino effect right because uh, can the loose cap uh, gas tank cap uh, cause the oxygen sensor to start failing the loose gas cap really won't do that, but it's definitely going to hurt the environment and hurt your fuel economy. Um, but there's a lot of, of examples where um, if you ignore something small, like an oxygen sensor or a spark plug, it can snowball into something more serious like a catalytic converter and uh, or first an ignition coil um, and then a catalytic converter. And it's just sort of a snowball effect. Like if you would have replaced that spark plug, it would have been, you know, ten dollars to do it yourself, a couple hundred bucks to have it done at the repair shop. You ignore that, then you're gonna be doing the ignition coil and the spark plug for over three hundred dollars. Ignore that and your car is eventually going to stop working. This actually happened to my husband many years ago. Yeah. You're gonna completely break down in the middle of the road and you're gonna need a new catalytic converter. The average cost for that is now eleven $1 hundred dollars. So wow. it's not a good idea to ignore that light. A lot of people are afraid of what that light's telling you, but usually it's just something really small, but if you ignore it, it's going to cost you big dollars. Yeah, so we're talking about actually a lot of bad news, but I, there's also good news in the report for this year uh, regarding hybrids and electric cars, which, which the repairs for those were are pretty expensive still, but they're coming down, you mentioned, right? It is so exciting to see every year I look at our data, car MD, um, tracks, um, all repairs, but hybrids use the same system that, that we do, you know, that all cars do to monitor that check engine light. And yes, hybrid repair costs are coming down. A hybrid related repair is no longer the most expensive repair in our database. Um, and it's really neat to see that as more hybrids come on the road and more people buy them and there are more people qualified to service them, um, it is, the repairs are coming down. Kind of like when you used to buy, you know, a VCR or some sort of old technology, the more popular it gets and yeah. the more available it is, the costs come down. And uh, it's just very exciting to see. Now, um, now the most common or the most expensive repair is replace transmission assembly and reprogram the electronic control module, which sounds really boring, but it's a $5,400 repair um, so it's it's you know not common but it's no longer a hybrid related repair and we're seeing a lot of examples where hybrids are costing less to repair yeah I, I actually drove uh, I'm driving a hybrid at for C max and I had the opportunity to find, to drive the new Fiat 500 electric in LA this week and mm -hmm. those cars are fantastic the technology is amazing but also you have to be be aware and then maintain the car and do the, the proper maintenance uh, especially with new cars right 
Yeah, and you know, another thing is with summer coming, it's really important to remember that heat plays a part on cars. Um, we're seeing more battery-related replacements. Now, part of that is because the car's computer can now catch when your battery's failing in many cases or when the charging system, the alternator, is having problems. But last year was the hottest year on record for 48 lower states. And um, when, the, when it's very, very extreme temperatures, it's important to realize you may have to have parts looked at and replaced more often. The battery is a perfect example. Wow, that's great. We're talking to Christian Broca from carmd.com. And can you please, Christian, uh, share the, the exact um, web uh, um, address for, uh, for the page where if people can look for more information about this? Yeah, and other you things think that you, you do, Carmody, I'm sure, does many other things, right? Yes, it's www.carmd, C-A-R-M as in Mary, D as in doctor, dot com. And you can see a link to the whole index report. And we also have something called a vehicle health scorecard where you can actually for free look up your own car or maybe one that you're looking to buy as a used car and see how that car ranks in terms of a letter grade, A, B, C, D, F. And then you also see the most common um, problems and repairs and what they cost. Um, so you can budget for upcoming problems or see what that used car might need in the future. Excellent. Christian Brockoff, uh, thank you very much for your time. Very, very interesting information. And uh, if I ever uh, have a car that breaks down on me, I'm going to call you, okay? Because you know you don't want it to, <laughs> You don't want it to break down first. You want to catch it before it breaks down. So okay, car, we have case, a lot of information and tools for that. <laughs> yeah, okay. But just in case it happens, I mean, uh, what a great, great, uh, great information you, can, you have been providing us. Thank you very much for your time. It's very nice talking to you. And uh, hopefully we won't wait another year until the new report comes. We will talk uh, sooner. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much. Pues ahí tienen un reporte muy interesante, la salud de los autos en Estados Unidos, el costo ha aumentado por primera vez en seis años 10% y ahora el promedio de una reparación es 367 dólares con 86 centavos. La razón número uno porque se prende esa lucecita del check engine en el tablero es un sensor del oxígeno, pero todo esto puede crear un efecto dominó y si uno no le presta atención y no le no hace la reparación o por lo menos lleva el auto a, a revisar en el momento inicial que se ve esa luz, puede crear a, empezar a causar un efecto dominó. Así que hemos puesto la información en facebook.com slash auto 060 para que estén pendientes. No se vayan, ya regresamos. Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota.